Uh, so guys, we're going to go through um, your loadout. Uh, so belt and play carrier chest rig. So preach, talk us about your belt. Um, so first up, the very first thing I have on my belt, I have an inner belt, which this just gets woven straight into my pants instead of my normal belt. Okay, just like such. And then that Velcro's onto the in inner of my existing belt. So it just keeps it secure, doesn't run around, doesn't flip around inside um, on the outside or anything, so it doesn't move. So that's, um, you know, a fantastic little piece of kit that I got from Platt Attack. Don't plug them or anything, but yeah. They do um, good kit. The other thing I have, which is, um, you know, obviously the outer belt, my, my trusty cold steel training knife um, and uh, a few pouches. I'll run through the basic pouches. Um, I've got a high speed gear pouches here for, for my magazines so just so I can put two mags there. So if I want to run just my belt I can do so very very easily. I have a dump pouch here which I carry a very small speed loader of a 330ml coke bottle. So it's very simple and I just drill the hole through the top a little bit of elastic cord so that, that'll hold about three, four magazines worth of gels in there without a problem at all. So the, the reason why you'd use that over a normal speed loader? Um, I don't want to carry too many gels on me mm -hmm. as ammunition in case I get killed in the field, uh, in game, and then they raid all my kit and take all my gels. And then I'll have other speed loaders back with my bag, my backpack so that I'm not going to run out of all my gels straight at once, even if they steal all my mags and everything. So I've got some stuff there. It's light, it's really easy to use. Um, yeah, so it's a very simple thing to add. Um, I've got two other high speed taco pouches here. One which carries my Leatherman in it, or my little knife. The other one, uh, one of my torches. Um, so I can actually just either leave that somewhere to the side and have the torch on and I can sneak around and actually like uh, take someone out stealthily or I can use it very um, in all the ways we use torches which is pretty simple sort of stuff. A little um, admin pouch here which I just carry some other little bits and pieces in so one of the pieces I put in here is actually my compass so you know if we're getting a little bit hardcore and I need to know where I'm going I'll put that in there. Um, I keep some snack food in here um, for example, there's like a little nut bar here, but I'll put like cliff bars and stuff like that as well. I also keep um, a few other things in here. Notepad, pencil. I use a builder's pencil, so they're very tough and strong. And then I have just a little illuminated light with a magnifier. So at night, if I need to see a map, it's not quite clear, I can do so because, you know, I'm 50 years old and can't really see anything very small quite easily anymore. Unfortunately, Presbyopia sucks. So that's my little loadout there. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it for my actual belt. Oh, the other thing I do, if you're going to get a knife, I always tether it to myself because I have a tendency to actually get lost. You know, and they just look like a stick if you drop it in the bush. And it's gone forever. So I just tether that in. If I need to get it out easily, I just basically undo one of these tiny knots and get it out. Okay. So, this is uh, my belt. So, um, I've gone with a minimal patrol padded belt. Um, so, they're nice and comfortable. They just clip on nice and easily. Um, so, working around, uh, I just I always keep my phone on me um, there. So, there's lots of information that I, I keep on me for uh, lots of reasons. So, and it's all on my phone. Pistol mag pouch, so, um, and then obviously my pistol there, so I can easily have uh, two pistol mags and, and, a, and a pistol. My first aid kit, so my first aid kit, it's it's fairly bulky, but it is designed to sort of not cater just for me, it's designed to cater for, for the, the entire squad. So it's quite extensive and it'll treat a range of, well, everything that you'll need it on the field pretty much. It wouldn't require a like a heli vac or something like that. So um, we'll probably do a deep dive into first aid kits um, a little bit later. That sits on my belt. And then around onto this side, 
Um, this is like a mini minimi pouch. Generally in here, if I was to drop my, um, my chest rig, that's where I'd run um, a couple of mags in here. Uh, it's also handy just there also where I would keep some snacks. Um, nothing what in there. What sort of snacks do you carry with you out in the field? Uh, jerky, um, carrots, um, music bars, carrots. stuff like that. <laughs> and then my torch as well. So that's what I sit on my belt. Uh, I think the whole whole thing about having having a belt like this or in like yours specifically is if you drop your chest rig for any reason, you can still function with what's what, what's on there. So um, that's why I have like a fairly utility pouch. There's no no specific use for it, but it has a lot of uses. Yeah, that's yeah. the same with my dump pouch. I yeah. can put so much shit in the those. Yeah. yeah. Um, I run a plate carrier, uh, and this is just the. 511 Taytech plate carrier, which has you know, been seen everywhere, I'm pretty sure. I essentially have on here three um, high speed taco pouches on the front that will basically fit any sort of mag I want in there, whether it's a 556, 762, AK, whatever, that'll all go in there. Um, I have a deadlight, which is basically designed so that if I get shot and I'm, it's midnight and people don't know where I am and they keep shooting at me, I can put a red light on. And so to know that I'm, that I'm dead. I have another torch here, which is basically just a white light. If I need to be walking around, it can just shine on if I'm in around camp and white light's okay, that's that's easy. My, my radio is here as well. Um, I have this set up so that this will actually clip onto the back of my shirt or the back of my hat and then into my ear with the, the funky little ear pieces, which are the best, get a closer with that. Those sort of ear pieces like that are just so comfortable to wear, so they're they're awesome. Yeah. Where would you um, get those ear pieces from? Uh, I normally buy mine from um, Code Red, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, there's a place on the Gold Coast. I can't remember what the exact name of them is now, but look up Code Red radios, ear pieces, um, and you can buy those. So all that is that's your normal acoustic tube, and yeah. then you've taken off. Yeah, what that, you'd say is the, the mushroom earpiece yeah, and replaced that, it with that bit on a moulded earpiece. Yeah, that bit on that's on there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just about to upgrade to bone conduction. Um, I would have loved to have it for this video, but um, I don't. So um, that's what I've got running there for, as my comms. I use a push to talk here, so with my radio, which listening here is just a bio thing, but it's a dual channel one, um, where I can press the top button and it will give me the top channel, press the bottom, it gives me the bottom channel. So I can listen and transmit on two channels at once. Going through just a tiny bit further, I love using these G-clips, just to essentially carry anything that I want. I normally clip my gloves here, I can put something and hang it in through these clips to essentially hold it close to me so I'm not gonna lose it. And I weave my radio down through my webbing to my radio here, which I obviously set it on whatever channel I want. I've got an extension cord which runs it round to the back and out to my whip antenna to give me a lot better range, which hopefully will work really well out at Susan River. Back on the side, I run a very much utility pouch here, one that I had from when I was in the army ages ago, to just carry anything in there for whatever I need, whether it's food, whether it's mats, whether it's, you know, 10,000 gels that I've stolen off the other team, whatever. Nothing else on my right hand side. Um, so that's, you know, very easy to access. I also carry weighted plates in here so I can take advantage of the armor rule in the game. So it gives me that extra life. If you don't know about that, read up about it on the rules. Keith. Good. Yep. Uh, so I've gone with a, a chest rig. So in here, we'll start on this side here. I have a grenade pouch grenade in here so um, again with the grenade rules um, it's anything that's going to expel a gel and if the gel hits you it's count as a, as a kill I think anything else um, grenade wise is theatrical that's a good in here is a is a utility pouch so um, again I'd probably keep some snacks but what I've got in here are my death cards 
the handy, handy dandy um, issue. In. There too. Yeah. What else? This is so I have generally this is attached with Uchi. I just I pulled it off. It's a little torch. Um, I just stuff I picked up on the field. <laughs> so if I see rubbish around, I I generally pick it up. So it's an old. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a real bullet. It's, <laughs> not, it's just a plastic bullet. Yeah, it's just rubbish. Top of your speed. So I run for uh, Milsim, I generally will run two to four mags in here, so I'll only ever really need these two here. Uh, I use the spare um, slots there to, to holster my radio. I always put my radio facing in to one to stop any when someone's you're receiving a message, your radio lighting up and that light facing out. So that's just a, a nice little handy tip that clips in, faces in, so it reduces any light emitting outwards. One tip I've got right there for you if you want. That's close in here, Lewis. I actually use a bit of gaff tape on the top of my radio to actually stop the light. So normally there's a light that will come on on the top of your radio. So I put a bit of gaff tape over it. So if you accidentally hit the transmitter or hit the radio light, this light is not going to come on at all. As you know, I can turn it on there and actually push the light on and we can see my light is on now, but you can't see it, which makes a big difference. Yeah, there it is now, the light's on now. So at night, it's not gonna flash up and give my position a light. So moving on to my next pouch is where I keep my water. So I always run a canteen in here. Um, in my backpack, I will have a three liter hydro that sits in the back. Um, if you've ever tried to fill a hydro pouch in the field, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. So generally I drink out of this um, or I use this to top up my hydration pouches. So uh, my other hydration pouch will be on my day pack, which we'll go through in a moment. Um, but that's seven litres. So three litres in my backpack, three litres in my day pack and a litre here. So going around to the other side, I have another grenade, so I carry two grenades on me. And they come out to my straps. So I've just got my speaker to, I haven't got my um, my full earpiece set up on my radio. I guess that's one of the downsides of when you've got a chest rig, there's this less real estate in which to weave stuff through. But I actually was thinking my next game I was gonna try the, the speaker here. Um, and then I've got my, my death rag there. Now, on the other side of my straps is actually where I keep my tourniquet. So, depending on the, the, the revive rules, tourniquet has to be applied, but it just sits up on my shoulder. So it's great, easy access for someone who's coming to apply it. They can see where it is. I also keep a whistle just tied in to the bottom of that as well in case of a real world emergency. And we'll just cinch back in there. Then coming down to here, two knots. What else do we got in here? Pistol magazine loader. It's always handy to have in there. And then a little admin pouch at the back. So yeah, that's what I got in here. My compass, Ziploc bag to keep anything waterproof. So again, if I still a whole bunch of gels or somewhere, I can easily dump them into into a bag. Yep. A mirror if I want to uh, at night and or in day. These are really handy. So if you've got one of those amazing eye lights that turns night to day, and then you catch that light with this mirror, you're turning a tool against the person who's using it. Or you know, like like we just say, you just put it up in a, in a tree and then people think there's someone there and you can go around and, and ambush them. So, $2, great oh, little guy. And then I have in here also my anti-fog. So it's just a little little cloth in there that you know, always sits in there. I also have my a two little, little, little carabiner there. Yep. And then on this side, this one carries my gloves. So whenever I'm not using them, they just stay there. 
So it's attached to me. Anything else that's important goes there if needs be or, or not. It stays out of the way fairly easily. I can just cinch it down into, into one of these or yeah. lock it in into this strap down there so it's not going to rattle around. But it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't bother me. So that's my, um, my chest rig there. Look, is there a reason why you've gone a plate carrier? Uh, for this event, because it has armor rules and I'm in maxing. Yep, okay. Yep. So I want to be able to have that advantage of having an extra life to help the team. It's not just me. Um, so it's, it's just going to help the team a little bit further. Um, if I want to run slick and actually just move a lot faster, because you know these, these aren't extremely heavy plates, they're only like a kilo and a half, two kilo. Um, so they're not that heavy. But once this is loaded up, you know, it's it's a bit of weight. And if I need to, pretty much everything I can do is on here. I can grab a bottle of water, which I carry in my backpack, and actually put it on here um, and combine it together. Um, so it just depends on how fast I want to move. Yeah, yeah. Just like what you've got there, but just a different sort of way. Yeah, so I think one of the things I can see, and, and I'll, I'm going to go down the path of going back and getting a plate carrier again. Um, it just gives you a little bit more real estate to evenly distribute your weight. Um, that's that's one of the, the best things about having a plate carrier. Um, one of the great things about having a chest rig though is it's lightweight. It's there's nothing to it. You you know it's in summer. It's actually really nice and breathable. So that's why I'm predominantly using this one for the time being. So yeah, yeah. And the good things about having a plate carrier, apart from the armor, is that. You can customize it fully out to whatever kit you want to have. If you want to have no mag pouches at all here and you want to run something different, you can do so. You can attach a whole heap of extra pouches to all the molly all over it. You know, like, I've got nothing on here at the moment, but quite easily could like I have here. So you can just, you're only limited by your imagination of what you want to put in it. That's the only downside to a chest rig. Essentially, it's got for most chest rigs, they, they come with your pouches. You yeah. can get ones bare um, and put your own pouches on, but you know, it's obviously very different. Um, so it does give you a different amount of customization. Cool. cool. Thanks guys. Cheers.